250 Gemstones Culture represents a nation of people that strive for excellence and greatness every single day. We are more than journalism. We are a revolution. Come on, come on, let's kick this door down and let everybody know we up in here. Welcome to the 250 Gemstones News TV channel. I am your host, Michael T. Porter, and I'm bringing the news to your ass like no other. This is a channel that represents a nation of people that strive for excellence and greatness every single day. I have another bomb news segment for y'all. But before I begin, y'all hit that like button, that subscribe button, that share button, hit that notification bell so you know when I am dropping. Also, if you like to support your boy, support the mission, support the channel, we getting bigger and bigger. Cash App dollar sign Mikey West should be right here, right here. Look down here so you won't forget. I need my money. Dad got a story for y'all. Dad beats his daughter to death because she wanted to go to prom with one of those little snot nosed little boys at her schools. Did y'all hear what I said? Father beats his daughter to death. He's Muslim, by the way. Beats his daughter to death. Because she wanted to do what every, what all the other kids are doing, going to prom. Woo! I can't wait for him to go to jail. I'm gonna say my comments for that, but I can't wait to he get in the uh, get behind them walls, get behind that penitentiary, so Big Bubba and Tyrone can beat on him. Let's pull up this story. Can I get a drum roll? Here we go. According to Law and Crime. This is the dad talking. I fucked up big time. Dad who beat daughter to death after fight over prom will likely spend the rest of his life in prison. Look at this piece of trash right here. Beat his own baby girl to death because she wanted to do all the other girls are doing. Getting all dolled up, going on a date. You in America, nigga. This ain't, this ain't Iraq. This ain't Saudi Arabia. You can just beat on women, then you just get away with it. How do you do this to your own child, your own baby girl? Myra Maro, that's a, and this the father, Mohammed Amuru, um, Amaru, Mohammed Amaru, that's his daughter right there, Maya. Out there in Illinois, has been cutting up Illinois' father who confessed that he lost his mind and beat his teenage daughter to death, apparently over her wanting to go to the prom, will likely spend the rest of his life behind bars. Mohammed Amaru, 44, was sentenced Thursday to 55 years in prison for killing his 17-year-old daughter, Maya Maru, inside her home in May 2022. A jury convicted him in August of first-degree murder after about an hour of deliberations, according to a local patch report. It only took them an hour to convict this nigga. It only took them an hour on May 1st, 2022, Maya's aunt found the girl's body in a family's Tenley Park home. She was covered in bruises, and prosecutors said Amaru attacked her with a rubber mallet, later discovered in a garage, as well as a bloodied and bent metal pole found on the kitchen floor. He bit this girl with a mallet and a, I mean, that's, that's a demon working through this person. Beat her down. Amaru was found near his daughter with self-inflicted wounds after ingesting pills in an apparent suicide attempt. He confessed to the crime in a text to a family member, local Fox affiliate WFLD reported. I lost my mind, went out of control and beat the shit out of her. He reportedly wrote, I fucked up big time. I'm sorry. I effed up. I'm sorry. I, I got to get monetized. The murder happened days after Amaru reportedly uh, rescinded permission for Maya to attend her high school prom. He allegedly told family members that he had looked through his daughter's phone and found messages that led him not to trust her. What messages? She's, she's, she's 17. She's hot. She's ready to go. Court records indicated that Maya was afraid of her father and had texted relatives in the days, in days before her death to voice her fears that he would beat her or kill her over her involvement in a minor car accident. Maya's aunt, Rhonda Amaru, said in a GoFundMe that Maya was a beautiful soul and light of our lives, as well as an amazing daughter, niece, sister, granddaughter, and the best friend anyone could encounter. 
Maya was also a primary caregiver for her mother, who was described in the GoFundMe as having been incapacitated three years ago. So her mother passed away. Hold on, let me read. Let me slow down. I went to a public school. Maya was a primary caregiver for her mother. So her mother, something wrong with the mom. The mom is sick, who was described, okay, incapacitated for three years. So the mom is sick. The mom can't move. Amaru will get credit for the more than two years he has already spent in custody, but the judge said that he must serve all of his term, all 55 years, according to Chicago. CBS Chicago reported after the sentence, Amaru's lawyers asked for a new trial and a reconsideration of the sentence, but both requests were denied. Man, so she was taking care of her mom. I want y'all to look at this piece of crap. And I don't know if he, I'm pretty sure he grew up in the Middle East. I'm pretty sure his earlier years, he grew up in the Middle East. They're really dominant on their women. And this is why, uh, what, what, what baffles me is that these people come to our country, which is a, what it used to be, I don't know what it is now, but predominantly Christian nation. They won't assimilate to the Christian belief, but they bring their ways over here, the very ways that oppress them, right? In their culture, this is normal. Beating women, setting women on fire. I mean, they absolutely torture their women over there. Now, I'm just going off with the news. If it's not like that, then it's not like that. But this religion of so-called peace, I don't see no peace over there, right? And if you Muslim, you're getting all your feelings. I don't give a damn because there's only one God, Father, Christ, Holy Spirit, and the Word of God, right? Holy Bible. They do horrific things to their women. And we're seeing case after case after case of these men doing horrific things to women. Can't, women can't have lights. They have no, now I'm hard on women, but I ain't that goddamn hard, Jesus. I ain't that damn hard on y'all. I love women. And Christian men, we love women. We just want, can y'all get some act right and work with us? That's all we ask for. Operating your femininity. We'll buy you a home. We'll buy you some diamonds. But me personally, outside of his religious belief on how he should treat women, um, I don't know if he had some insecurities, but, uh, I think there was some type of S abuse essay going on between him and his daughter. Cause why is your daughter fearing you like this? Like, why are you so concerned? It's just one thing to be protective of your daughter, but he's overprotective. Like he wants her or something like he's overprotective. Like, uh, he wants his daughter to be his girlfriend. I think some S a was going on me personally. I'm just keeping one that I'm going to keep it 100. I think he was uh lusting after his daughter and his lust turned into jealousy. Cause he said he went through the phone and he saw some things that made me not trust her. What you mean not trust her? She's about to graduate next year, or she might be a senior. She's 17. She's about to leave the house. It's your job. See, a lot of people shouldn't be having children. This is my personal. I don't have any children because I'm not where I want to be in life. Because you have to have a certain financial state, a certain mental state, a spiritual state. I have all the intangibles. I got to get my stuff together to have these children because I want to spend time on my babies, right? Got to have a whole bunch of cash coming in, especially in America. It's getting more and more expensive. A lot of these people shouldn't have children. He's one of them. This piece of trash should not have children. He's one of these in those categories that should never have children. She's a young woman. She's not a child anymore, for one. And he said he don't trust her. Which you, so when he said that, he should have said, well, you don't trust her, insinuating that she's about to give up the cookie, right? She's beautiful. It seems like she's likable. And your daughter, uh, by biology and scientific measures, it's around this time, uh, everybody, teenagers are horny, and she's ready to go. And it's like he's he's not really approaching her like a father. He's approaching her like her like he wants to be with her. That ain't your damn girlfriend. That's your daughter. And as a father, you must understand your daughter is going to spread it open. It's your job to make sure she spread it open for the right man, for the right young man, for the right boy, you know? And teach him, hey, if you do this, there's a serious consequence. If you don't make this man wrap up, I know it feel good. Talk to your kids straight. Nobody like using nobody like using condoms. I'm a Cali nigga. I know. You, can, you might as well call me a down south nigga too. I got to go back and forth. Hey, nobody like using the condoms. But understand, if you don't use these condoms, you're going to be a baby mama because you're not married. 
And then everybody going to be talking about how y'all did. You want your business out in the street. It's all of these things you have to go over, especially with your daughter, with your baby girl. You want to make sure you give your cookie to someone special. This may be your husband. Okay, at least be somebody that cares about you. Damn, I mean, really cares about you. As a father, you got to uh, check these boys out. You know how you was at, at, at that age. And, and she's a beautiful girl. You know these guys want one thing, and that's where you got to, you know, set the tone, If you know? Check them niggas at the door. This is my baby girl. And if you really don't like her, you know, y'all going on a date and she coming right back home. Because as a father, I ain't going to be like, I don't know. No, I do know. As a father, he should know that, uh, well, there's always some demonic things going on. She said she's fearing this man. She's scared to go home. That's a problem when your baby girl is afraid to come home. She should confide in her father. She, she should have the luxury and the privilege to run to her daddy for love and protection and God is there. Daddy, what do I do? I want to be with this boy get to get a man's perspective. But she's afraid of this man because I think he was, you know, like I said, S.A. He was abusing her. He was abusing this girl. I, I just believe this man was abusing her in all cast, spirit, spiritually, sexually, physically, emotionally. He putting a fear in this woman, this young woman, which is, a, which is his daughter. He's supposed to pass her off to another man. As a father, you're supposed to vet these little snot-nosed little boys. What will he bring into the table? You're supposed to check your daughter, make sure her head's straight. Family's supposed to come together. You know, if your daughter, you know, really like this guy, go meet the parents. You know, because I'm serious about togetherness. Y'all really love each other. And y'all, as parents and grandparents can chime in, y'all supposed to be giving these babies the game. She's gonna she's gonna have sex. I'm I don't know. Maybe I just grew up in the wild. I grew up with the gangs. I grew up uh I I ran to the murder capital because they were locking them niggas up in California. God damn. I seen it all from partying, shootouts. I just I just life is gonna be life. But as a father, you gotta protect your baby girl. You are the number one man that should be in her life until she's married. And hey, I'm not in competition with a husband because I'm always gonna be daddy. The it's a blessing that my little girl can come to her father who cares about her and she can go. She got two men in her life that care about her. That's how it's supposed to be. But he's not even allowing her baby to grow because he, I honestly believe he wants this little girl all to himself. He's sick. This is a sick man. He said it himself. Don't just take my word. He said, I effed up. But y'all flood my comments. What do y'all think about this story? This is crazy. 250 capital G. I'm gone.